In this video, I will create a warehouse with racks and then compare two different design options using different fixtures. First, I will start a new interior project. Interior projects have direct and inter-reflected calculations enabled. I will import a DWG file to use as the floor plan for the warehouse. From the file menu, I will select the import command, then CAD file, then select the interior warehouse.dwg file. This file will be a 2D reference that I will trace to build the 3D warehouse. To help trace the warehouse, I will turn on endpoint object snap. Next, I will select the rectangular room command. Before we begin, keep in mind that mouse instructions are active during each command in the process in the program. In the dynamic properties, I will set the room height to 26 feet and adjust the room reflectance values to 50, 30, and 10, which are typical reflectance values for an industrial space. From a plan view, with the assistance of endpoint object snap, I will left click to locate the first corner of the room and then left click to locate the opposite corner. By moving to a southeast view, you can see I constructed a 3D room. Now I will create the storage racks inside the warehouse. This time I will use the structure command. Structures are used for objects inside of a room. The difference between rooms and structures is the default direction of the surfaces. For a room, the surfaces point inward, while structure surfaces point outward. On the ribbon, I will set a height of 24 feet for the rack and adjust the reflectance values to 10, 10, and 0. I will change back to a plan view to make it easier to draw the racks. With endpoint OSNAP and using the DWG background as reference, I will left click to start the drawing and left click again to complete the rack. Switching to a 3D view, we can see a new storage rack has been created. To save time, I will use the copy command to add the additional racks. From the ribbon, I will select the copy command, then left click to select the rack and right click to complete the selection. Next, I will left click at the bottom corner of the rack to set my base point. Then I will move my mouse to the next rack location. With the left mouse button, I will locate the destination point of the rack. Then I will click to set the location for each remaining rack. Right clicking will complete the copy command. Next, I need to insert a calculation zone to see the light levels in the warehouse. The quickest command to insert a calculation zone onto the warehouse floor is the calculation zone on surface command. In the dynamic properties, I can adjust the properties of the calculation zone, including the height from which the light will be measured. I will use the default height of zero feet and then adjust the row and column spacing to five feet and name it Warehouse A. From a southeast view, I will left click on the edge of the warehouse floor to select it. If you accidentally highlight an incorrect surface, you can continue to left click in the same location to cycle through to the floor surface. Next, I will right click to indicate I am done with selection and the calculation zone will be inserted onto the surface. If we look at the calculation zone, you will see a directional arrow indicating the way the calculation points are facing. Since we put the calculation zone on a room surface, the arrow is pointing inward towards the interior. If we were to place the calculation zone on the surface of one of our racks, which was built as a structure, the calculation points would face outward. Next, we need to add luminaires to the warehouse. 
Before we can insert a product, we must first add it to the schedule. I will select Schedule from the ribbon and then click New to launch the Product Selection dialog. For this project, I will search for a linear product appropriate for warehouses. I know that I want to use the IBL product line from Lithonia, so I will type in IBL into the search bar to pull up the results. From here, I'm going to use the filters to find the exact product I'm looking for. I will set the lumen package to 24L, the distribution to ND or narrow distribution, and the lamp I will choose LP740. Using the filters, I have reduced the list from 143 products to four products that match my criteria. I will select the IBL 24L ND LP740 and then click OK to add it to the schedule. The product will now be added as a new row in the schedule. From here, I can also review additional product data. From the schedule, you can click the report button to open up the photometric tool in your browser to view additional product details. From the schedule, I can adjust factors like lumen output on products that are not listed as absolute, the light loss factor, lumen multiplier, number of lamps, and wattage. For this, I will change the light loss factor to 0.9 and leave the other values unchanged. I will select OK to save the schedule. Make sure to click OK instead of the X at the top of the window as that will not save any changes you've made into the schedule. In the design environment, to place a luminaire in the design, select the place button. The ribbon will change to display properties related to the luminaire. There is a drop-down list of luminaires that I can place. Since this is the only luminaire in our schedule, that is the default option for placement. First, I will set the mounting height to 24 feet. You can use the mouse to manually place the luminaires, or you can enter absolute coordinates in the command line in the status bar. The lower left corner of the warehouse is located at x equals zero, y equals zero. To insert the luminaire, I will type the coordinates in the command line using a comma to separate the values. I will enter 10 for the X location, 10 for the Y location, and 0 for the base Z location. Then press the Enter key to complete the command. You can see the luminaire has been inserted at 10, 10 in the warehouse. Instead of manually placing all luminaires, I will use the array command and insert the rest of the luminaires at a set spacing from the first luminaire. From the Modify tab, select the Array Grid button and then select Array by Spacing. I will change the X and Y spacing to 20 feet. First, I need to select the luminaire I want to array, so I will left click to select the luminaire and right click to complete the selection. Next, I need to set a base point to start the array. I will left click at the center of the luminaire to set the base point and move my mouse to the opposite corner to set the extent of the array. As you can see, the program will show you a preview of the luminaire arrangement before you complete the command. Left click will complete the command and place all the luminaires. At this point, we have everything we need in the project to perform a lighting calculation. By clicking calculate, you will see the point by point calculated values on the calculation zone. You can view the statistics for the calculation on the statistics tab on the right side panel. At this point, I can see we have a problem, as the racks are covering up some of the calculation points and it's producing zero foot candles, which affects the results. The solution is to mask these calculation points under the racks. Similar to placing a calculation zone, I will use the mask surface command. I will first left click to select the calculation zone, then right click to complete the selection. 
Next, I will left click each rack bottom. Once I have selected them all, I will right click to complete the mask. As you can see, the points are now gone. If we want to quickly visualize the lighting in this warehouse, click the render button to see our design in a 3D rendering. First I'm going to go into a southeast view and then click zoom all so we can get a closer look at the rendering. Next I'm going to click the zoom to center button so I can get into the rendering and look around and see the 3D model for our fixture as well as the racks. By using the mouse wheel I can scroll backwards to look at the room. We have a design, but is it the best design? Next we'll add a new luminaire and compare the results. As you can see in this file, I have already copied the entire warehouse and placed a copy next to it. I also renamed the calculation zone in the new warehouse to Warehouse B to easily differentiate between the two in the Statistics tab. Now we will open the schedule, click New, and add a new product. I will change the filter from a narrow distribution to the wide distribution option. I will select the IBL 24L WD LP 740. Clicking OK will add it to the schedule and then click OK again to save your schedule. We have a few options here for swapping the luminaires. We could expand out the design environment and select the luminaires there, but because we have identical ones in our warehouse A, what I will do is first use our selection filters to only have luminaires enabled, then click properties and use a selection window to select the luminaires. As you can see, only the luminaires are selected. In the properties menu, I will use the drop down box to change from luminaire A to luminaire B. On the Luminaire tab, I'm going to turn on the labels so that you can see the two warehouses have different luminaires. Now run the calculations again. As you can see on our Statistics tab, we have the results for both luminaires and can compare the values to determine what luminaires best meet our design requirements. This concludes this instructional video. Please send any questions or comments to the Visual Support Center at support at visual-3d.com.